Hello, Astro people. So last class, we talked about the celestial sphere and the equatorial coordinate system. Let's continue the class then. Now let's look at other coordinate systems defined on the celestial sphere. So we can define a coordinate system that depends on the local position of the observer. The equatorial system was different. In the equatorial system, the position of a star is defined by right ascension and declination, right? These are two coordinates that every observer on the surface of the planet agrees on. But this is our perception of the sky for a local observer. The fundamental plane you can define as the horizon. So the horizon would be the plane that is tangential to the surface of the earth for any observer. You have the zenith. The zenith is the point directly overhead of the observer. Uh, if you have the north cardinal point and the south cardinal point, a circle, an arc of circle that passes by the north point to the zenith and to the south point is the local meridian. So here you see how this perception of the sky can be projected on the celestial sphere. You have here uh, an observer on Earth. It's on this point on the Earth. And uh, the local horizon here, you can define a plane that is parallel to this local horizon that is going to bisect the celestial sphere. Because the dimensions of the Earth are much smaller than the dimensions of the celestial sphere, these two planes are the two planes uh, coincide. So the local horizon bisects the celestial sphere in two equal hemispheres. All of the stars in this hemisphere here are all above the horizon. And all of the stars in here, in the other hemisphere, are below the horizon. So this is what the observer sees. You have here this plane would be the local horizon. The cardinal points north and south here defines the meridian. And uh, you would have the zenith right above the observer. And the celestial pole is somewhere uh, above the horizon. Either the north celestial pole, if you are on the northern hemisphere, or the south celestial pole, if you are on the southern hemisphere. So the coordinates of a star in this system would be given by two angles called altitude and azimuth. So the altitude is the angle from the horizon to the star. The azimuth is the angle from the south point to the projection of the star along the arc that goes from the zenith to the star and to the horizon. Right, so you pass an arc, a 90 degree arc from the zenith to the star, intersects the horizon. At this point here, to the south, you measure the azimuth. So how does the celestial equator would fit then in this picture? You have here the observer. Again, this is the Earth, the observer is on the Earth. The south celestial pole is in here, the north celestial pole is in here, the celestial equator is here. Usually, yeah, to pass from the local coordinates to the equatorial coordinates is very easy. You simply rotate, you rotate the system so that the observer is vertical, all right? So that's what was done here. You rotate everything. So now the celestial equator will have an inclination with respect to the local horizon. So here shown also the diurnal motion in the two reference frames. So the diurnal motion is the east-west daily rotation of the celestial sphere. Uh, the path of a star in diurnal motion is a small circle around the celestial pole. So in equatorial coordinates, you would see the star is not changing. It's right ascension or it's declination because these are universal coordinates. However, altitude and azimuth, they do change as the celestial sphere is doing its diurnal motion and all stars are going from east to west. You see that their altitude and their azimuths are changing. 
in time along the path of the diurnal circle. So we can define uh, other points along the diurnal circle. Specifically, culmination is when the star crosses the meridian. The star is going here, the star is rising in the east, rises, culminates, that's when it crosses the horizon, and then it uh, goes descending until it sets in the west. All the stars do that, not only the sun. They rise, they culminate, and they set. So culmination is the meridional passage of a star in its diurnal motion. One thing that you may have already realized is that the inclination of the uh, equator, of the celestial equator with respect to the zenith is a measurement of the latitude. You can see that easily if you imagine how uh, an observer at, at the pole would see the urinal motion. At the pole, the Earth is rotating right under you. So uh, you would have that the pole is right at the zenith. And the diurnal motion would be parallel to the horizon. If you are on the equator, that's the opposite. You are standing at the equator and the Earth is rotating on an axis that coincides with the horizon. So in this case, the celestial equator is right above your head. In this case, the celestial equator passes right by the zenith. The diurnal motion then would be uh, small circles parallel to the equator. They would do right angles with the horizon. Stars rise at right angles. And then you see that the north and the celestial pole are on the horizon. So uh, the latitude here is zero and the elevation of the pole is zero. At the pole, you are at latitude 90 degrees and the elevation of the pole is 90 degrees. So the elevation of the pole gives you the latitude. So this angle here is the latitude and the angle from the zenith to the celestial equator is also the latitude of the observer. In the next video, let's look at ecliptic coordinates.